Hello guys, welcome back to Dev++. Uh, today's episode is going to be about system design. We're going to talk about three important topics about system design. Feature flag, system settings, and environment variables. So let's jump to it. Before we start, uh, please, uh, if you like the video, just hit the like button. Uh, you can also share and subscribe to the channel. And leave any comments if you like the content or if you have any opinions regarding what is being uh, uh, discuss here and also what other video or content you like to be uh, seen on the ch channel okay so let's jump into it okay so uh, we're going to talk about feature flash system settings and environment variables right so <clears throat> what we need to be what we're going to be talking about today is going to be those three topics for system design it's going to take about 20 to 25 minutes uh, i'm going to talk about uh, you know what are they good for what are the common use cases? What are some examples that you can uh, that you can um, use this uh, uh, these concepts? And also probably a couple, couple of things where not to use it based on uh, my personal experience, right? Uh, okay, so let's start. Let's dive right in. Uh, let's talk about feature flags first. So, which problems do feature flags solve? Um, usually, this is a concept that is used for dynamically activating or de deactivating features and behaviors of your software. So let's give you, for example, you're building a new module right on the system that affects somehow how the rest of the system be behaves. The good practices to, uh, you know, enable this behind a feature flag. So in the case you, you enable and things start going sideways, you just disable it and everything should be back to normal, right? How you implement this? Usually it's simple, as simple as the database stable right can be edited uh, by user with a privilege or super admins right? right there's also a couple of uh, external apis that provide similar services for me um, maybe an overkill but i think that you know as the system grows this could be like a good way of using it right it's simply like external system that you call using an api and they give you a couple of, of um you know requests and responses for uh you know telling you you which one is enabled and which one isn't, right? Uh, besides that, they give you like a really cool interface, kind of like an admin panel where you can manage all those flags and settings, right? How can this be exposed? Of course, if you're using an external system, it will be a web service. If you're using your own system, this could also be a web service. That's usually how uh, how it's done, at least for clients such as web platforms and dashboard, dashboards and mobile applications. Um, also, um, from your backend code, from your API code, this could be accessed to by you know, directly calling, you know, making like a, a SQL query or some sort of like a, a service function that, you know, just pulls all the flags or any specific flags that you, that you want, right? Ideally, um, you know, if you want to make this like super fast and super efficient, uh, use, uh, you know, access to the database with a caching service or with a caching, caching layer, uh, maybe like any memory caching or something like Redis or Mongo that's like faster than making a query. And that will help you like speed things, right? Because every time you call a flag, flags don't usually change that often. You can just use pull it from the caching layer and you speed down with that. When it's not a good idea to use feature flags, uh, a good example are or build systems, right? You don't want to, uh, you know, transpile or compile whatever, uh, you know, language you're using, uh, using feature flags because, you know, you know let's imagine, let's, let's go back to the initial example where you deploy this new module that affects the behavior of the system, you enable it in the build system, you get a new build and then things start going sideways or you, you simply don't want to activate it for all the users, for some, certain users. And then then you will have to like do another build in order to disable the system, right? Um, some good examples, uh, just to enable and disable SMS notifications or a new screen or a new feature, like our previous example, enable disable fee collections. If you're doing some uh, transactions or payments, those are, those are good options, right? There is a variation of feature flags where uh, you mix a little bit of uh, maybe like beta users or, or alpha users to your system to enable and uh, use certain features, right? So you could potentially create a feature flag where 
you know, if a user has certain, uh, you know, flag or, or capability or is labeled like a, like an alpha user or a privileged user uh, or a privileged tenant in your system, they can access certain uh, features. This is really good for A-B testing, right? Uh, usually large platforms do this where you select on a specific group of users to test a feature before you actually deploy it to everyone, right? That's just like an advanced version of, of regular feature flags, right? Then we have system settings, right? System settings are usually used for kind of like changing also the behavior on the system. But in this case, it's not about disabling or enabling features. It's more like tweaking variables and tweaking conditions of doing certain uh, activities, right? Similar to the implementation of the feature flags, you just put a table that can be edited by a user with privileges or uh, an admin panel, right? This also can be exposed by web services. It's very rare. I don't remember right now like a case where we should like put parameters or settings exposed via web service to outside parts of the system. It's just, it is possible if your mobile app is com complex or if your web app is complex, you may require those settings before you start like doing things and presenting things to the user. But it's rare, right? You could also have service functions that call this directly from your database. And again, these type of things, as they're not usually changing, uh, it's good to establish like a catch and layer for uh, faster access, right? Um, when it's not a good idea to use system settings to store credentials or secrets, right? Um, this is a very common thing to do, a very bad practice in my experience, to store like secret or credential in this, just because you add another level of exposure of those secrets. I, I don't think that system settings or database tables are the correct place to store, um, you know, this type of credentials or secrets, which shouldn't be accessed by no one, Should, shouldn't be accessed by no one in the organization or in the development team, right? Um, some good examples for this, percentages that you charge on the sales tax, uh, hours, you know, before enabling a, a specific feature, um, you know, windows or, or, or frames that you want between you know certain activities in the system uh enable or disable things at certain hours like you can do certain operations after 8 p.m or after 8 a.m then you can modify like the ape with like 9 p.m you know changes those those type of, of things right and finally we have environment variables which is the most common thing that everybody uses if you're not using environment variables in your system then uh probably you're doing something wrong right so how do those environment variables, uh, you know, fit in this system design uh, talk, right? Uh, environment variables usually store secrets or values that are specific to the environment where they are uh, located. Hence the name environment variables, right? Um, how this implemented, the 90-90% of the most common way of implemented environment variables is through EMB files or .emb files, right? You put this in build system, you hide it from everyone else you just inject it at some point at the bill and then that runs by itself but it's also there are also a couple of services that are over uh by uh you know um either third parties or uh you know cloud computing computing or, or cloud uh infrastructure providers such as uh google cloud aws and azure that they give you like a way of storage this to storage this in in a very uh safe way encrypted right because um, usually secrets, um, and credentials that no one is allowed to see because of security or because of some legal requirement, uh, can be only be seen by a person who is, um, you know, um, he has the proper privileges to be able to, to see them, right? Storing in a secret container and then the development team or someone in DevOps can access that container without, without actually seeing the value of the secret, right? Um, how these are exposed, um, normally they are not exposed. They are local to, to each one of the environments. So, um, again, um, it's really, really also rare. The environment variables are shared between, uh, you know, members of the organization. This is something that is, uh, um, you know, very, um, delicate, right. And also normally managed by the infrastructure staff or, by the, the person who is responsible for the infrastructure, right? When not to use, it's not a good idea, and I've seen this happen a lot, 
to put uh you know system pa parameters or system settings like we discussed in the past or even feature flags on environment uh variables right because uh, usually environment variables are uh designed for other type of things they're hard they should be hard to change and they should require like a change a big change of the system in order to, to create a different environment right or or, or changing an environment variables some examples of this um secret key for apis uh server ids or environment IDs, uh, environment identification, if you're like dev, dev1, dev2, master, QA, production, those type of things. Um, database credentials, this, this is like maybe like the most common scenarios for environment variables. And some more things such as encryption keys. Again, environment variables shouldn't be exposed to anyone. Ideally, they should be encrypted and should, they should be available only to the code and no one can see them, right? Um, so just to summarize real quick here, uh, remember uh, feature flags to enable and disabling, uh, you know, behaviors or modules or screens on, on your applications or new modules on your application. System settings are usually uh, general parameters and values that you can, you know, share across the app to not necessarily modify behavior or could be modifying behavior, but the intent Intention here is not to enable or disable big parts of the of the system, which is delegated to feature flags or the feature flags concept, right? Uh, environment variables for sort of things that are very very secret. This should be like a very rigid container. This is the thing that you said like this is where we put the things that are really really valuable, right? And uh, just to remember, the feature flags also has a variation where you can like. like uh, find a way of maybe with a database road or, or a property on, on users or maybe companies or tenants where you can enable certain features for certain group of users. Just to give you a broad example of that, just because I, did, I didn't put it on the slides, um, you know, to say that you have three groups of users and you or, or N group of users that you identify by a specific value, uh, you know, property on their user stable, on their user road. And then you indicate that a feature flag is only enabled for this or, or this group of users, right? That's also possible, right? So um, this is a very short, uh, short uh, presentation, different than the other ones. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys uh, can take something of this and remain, remember to uh, like uh, the, the video if you enjoy it. Uh, you know, share with someone that uh, these concepts and this information should be use, uh, useful. Make sure to subscribe to the channel because I will be doing videos every week and leave any comments if I make any mistake or if you guys want to see something else uh, being done on the channel. Thank you.